How many know what next week is? Week of increase. Glory to God. Well, we have uh, prayer on Wednesday nights, and Craig and Dwayne have both been praying about week of increase, and uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing if you were here, you, you joined faith, and, and we're, we're, we've, been, you know, we've been headed in the right direction. You know, it, it does, week of increase doesn't just happen. No, no big meeting just happens. It, take, it takes a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of, a lot of people and things happening and, and the wisdom of God to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And uh, we're believing God still, Amen. right? And uh, tonight, we're going to spend a little time talking about prayer. And then we're going to spend some time together, together, Amen. praying. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray about week of increase, uh, about, about the word that's going to go forth, about the people that are going to come in, about the service that we get to do, and about the things that God's got planned for that week. Isn't it exciting? Uh, it, 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 week of increase for me this year, is a, it's always exciting, but it's going to be good. Amen. Don't miss week of increase. If, if you have felt like you're supposed to be here and hadn't figured out how to do that yet, we're believing God with you for your way here and believe that you'll get here because it's going to be a good place to be. Uh, it's going to be simulcast into Sarasota, so they're going to get to see it. If you're near Sarasota, go there because you'd be around people, right? right? Fellowshipping. Uh, it's a good place. It's good to be around people in a building. Yes. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> Let me go over here. It's, a gra- it's good to be around people. Yes. We, are, we are like Christ, and He loves people. Amen? We love people. We want to be around them. We want to be hospitable to them. We want to help them. We want to be friends with them. We want to be brothers and sisters in Christ with them. We want to be around people. Glory to God. That's all free because that's not part of what we're going to talk about. Amen? Look at Matthew 21, 22. Prayer is so many times, you know, uh, it can become begging in your prayer closet. It can become, it can become the thing you use only when trouble's around. It can become a lot of things that it shouldn't be. Uh, it, is, it is the very thing that opens the door and ushers in the power of God. So prayer truly is powerful in that way because it ushers in the power of God to make differences in areas that otherwise he might not have had access to. And people say, well, he's God. He could do anything he wants. Yeah, and he did. He chose to work through prayer. Yeah, he did anything he wanted, and that's what he chose to do. <laughs> he is God. He can do everything. He made, he made, he made choices and had set, up the, set up everything just the way he wanted it. Why? Because what better thing to do than have a part? I mean, what if God just did everything for you, and you never had to do nothing? You'd have no part in anything going on. You just be a little robot or a puppet doing, doing only the things that somebody made you do. And instead, he gave us a free will to serve him with all our heart. And what, what an awesome honor that is. Amen? Matthew 21, 22 says, All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. You know, th- this is one of those things where when we start praying corporately, we want to immediately go from we're going to ask, we're going to believe, we're going to receive. Right? We don't, there's no space in between there where it says, and then later on. That doesn't, it doesn't say later on. It doesn't say sometime, someday in the future. It says, if you ask, believing, you shall receive. And, you know, so many times in my life, I know I've prayed, and then I said I believed, and then I asked why I didn't receive. Well, my answer was back in this next phase, because if you believe, you receive. Because you believe you receive. You say, you know, it doesn't, you don't receive because you believe you receive. So you actually believe that you have it. So it's no longer in question anymore. So when we pray tonight corporately, the things we pray, we pray them in, it's the will of God for this meeting was, was ordained by God. So when we pray, we believe and we expect, we expect, we're not wondering if it's going to be good. We're, we're expecting, we're just waiting to say, okay, <laughs> something good's coming because we're receiving. We've already received it. That's, that's when your heart gets excited. Why? Because you've already received it. 
You know, you're, you know you have it. You know you're going to get it. You've already received it. And, and so when we pray tonight, that'll be the first thing. As, as, we, as we pray together, let's believe together. Let's not have any doubts or not, not, let's not sit back and say, okay, now we'll see what happens. No, we won't see. We'll know. Amen. We'll get to see it, but we're not waiting to see it to believe it. Amen. We, we, we're just, we're expecting to see it. Glory to God. And then uh, let's go to Acts 4. I'm going to tag on uh, where Brother Moore was last week talking about boldness, speaking the word in boldness, but um, that prayer and that, that whole situation, we're going to kind of look at it a little bit before we pray together. I'm not going to talk a long time because we're going to spend some time praying. How many, how many know that sometimes the one minute prayer is good? Sometimes you need to come together and enjoy praying, first of all. You, can, you know, you enjoy anything that works. That's right? right? <laughs> if you don't think it works, you won't enjoy it. Yeah. If you think it works, you'll spend the time doing it because it'll work. Yes. Yeah. Right? And so, so we want to know that, that we're in faith that not only does it work, it's working. Amen? Amen. This is, a, a, well, back in about verse 13, he talked about, um, the, the Pharisees and the, all the people that were against them. Well, there you go. They saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and they marveled. You know, sometimes you just have to be dumb enough to believe. Right? <laughs> That's what they're saying. These people... Aren't, they don't have any schooling. They, they didn't grow up like us. They, they've been hanging around. With the, but then they figured out, wait a second, they look just like Jesus. They look just like Jesus. They just decide to believe things and speak, and it happens. That looks just like Jesus. But yet, they're unlearned, unlearned and ignorant. If they were unlearned and ignorant, then I'm okay being unlearned and ignorant. Right? Right? I'm dumb enough to believe the Word of God. Glory to God, which has nothing to do with our message. So go ahead. Verse 14. Uh, actually, skip down to 18. I'll, I'll, I'll preface the rest of it. But they basically, they said that, that you, can, you, can, you can no longer teach in that name. And, and, and that, that's what they're looking to do. The enemy today is still trying to keep that name you know what? That's why he likes all these other religions and wants that religious freedom. Religious freedom. Why? Because they exclude the name of Jesus. You know, I was, I was reading Psalm 115 this morning and it, where it talks about um, the people that, that uh, serve idols. Their idols have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, they can't hear. They have hands, they can't feel. They, can't feel. they have feet, they can't walk. And then he, then he says, and the ones that make them are just like them. How, how sad that is. Because they're, they're serving something and it makes them just like them. Guess what? If we continue to serve God because of who he is, because of what he's done, because of what he's put in us, because when we serve God, then we are just like him. If they're just like their gods, we'd be just like our God. Amen? What, what, what a magnificent thought that we can be just like our God. And what a sad thought that they're exactly like theirs. What's he saying? He says they can't hear. They have, they have ears. They can't hear. They have eyes. They can't see. Why? They're just like their gods. Amen? It, it, whatever your God is, that's what you'll be like. That's why they said we, we took note that they'd been like Jesus. That was their Lord. And they were becoming more and more and more like him. And that's what we should be doing, more and more and more like him. And they said to them, you know what? They didn't even talk about any, any other teaching because they don't care about other teaching. Because other teaching had no power. But they said, you can no longer teach in the name of Jesus. Was that verse 18? Yeah, they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 19. And Peter and John answered and said, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. What's he saying? We're, we're going to have to see what God told us to do. 
Now, a lot of people have taken that verse and tried to use it in church and say we can tell the pastor what to do because, you know, God told us. Let me just tell you, stop it. There you go. <laughs> verse 20. Well, let me, go, let me go a little further. You're wrong. Stop it. Okay. Now, now we'll go ahead. I went to a church that was denominational before I went here because that's where God told us to go. And, and I tried, <laughs> and Rick knows too, that I tried to push the word of faith in there against the will of the pastor. That was not okay. That was not okay. Well, it, 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 being right doesn't make you right. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that. So when they had further threatened them, in other words, after they said that, they thought, oh, they're not getting it. We better threaten them again. <laughs> so they, they further threatened them. If, if the first threat didn't work, I don't think the second threat's going to do any good. They let, and then they let them go, finding nothing like this. They, they couldn't figure out what to do. Why? Because the man was 40 years old, and he'd been without, hadn't been able to walk all his life, and he's standing there walking. You can't do anything with that. Right? You can't say, well, they did it. Well, they should have. Well, um, okay. Go. Don't talk about Jesus anymore. Just go. Why? They got nothing left to say. You know, there is no argument against the goodness of God. Amen? I remember I used to have a guy that worked uh, for us, and he would watch, like, people that had healing ministries and true healing ministries, and he'd say, oh, that's just all act. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I mean, he literally would watch so he could tell them, you know, try, try to figure out how they were fooling all these people with all these healing miracles. I'm like, my goodness. And, you know, I couldn't talk to him. Why? Because he couldn't see or hear. Amen? I don't know why I told you that, but there you go. And being let go, verse 23, they went to their own. Now, this truly was their own. These were people, you know, Brother Moore talks about Brother Hagin talking about going back to their company. And these were truly their own. Now, remember, Jesus was sent to his own, and his own received him not. These people were their own. This was their company. This was their acquaintances, their partners. This was people that were joined with them in faith. And they went to them, and they reported. They didn't report about the healing because everybody already knew about it. It, it was widespread, and they were, but they reported all that the chief priests and the elders said unto them. And I thought it was interesting that what happened when they reported this. this you know, a lot of people think, well, it made them mad. It didn't make them mad. It stirred them up. Because what they saw was, wait a second, it's the Word of God. It's the teaching of Jesus that they don't like. Revelation came in such a way that they had never had before because what the, the only thing they commanded them was not to teach in the name of Jesus. He said, that's the enemy's ploy. If we'll not teach in the name of Jesus, then it can't go any further. But if we do it with the boldness we should, so what are we going to do about it? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. What did they say? They said, it said they reported all the chief priests and the elders said unto them, and, and you know, they're in their company. Just going back to that a little bit. We're going to have a whole bunch of company coming. And they'll, they're in our company. And the ones you don't think are in our company, they want to be in our company. Amen? So we want to treat them like they're in our company. We want to be kind. We want to be hospitable. Well, I know we've got pastors and ministers and guests coming from all over the place. And, and during this week, we want them to be refreshed. We want them to be built up, edified. We want them to take out of here, stirred up the way these people were stirred up. Amen. Stirred up about the things going on in their church. Amen. The things going on in their ministry. Thank you, Lord. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice. That word lifted up literally means set sail. It means set sail. It means, it means like taking up your anchor. In other words, they're saying, okay, we're going to go. Get the anchors up, boys. So get the anchors up. Put the sail up as high as you can. We're getting ready to blow this thing. We're gonna, and that's how they begin to pray. They lifted up their voice. One voice. They lifted up their voice and, as one, like, like, like they were getting ready to take off. They were so stirred up. This wasn't just prayer. This was excited prayer. 
It wasn't rebellious prayer. It was excited prayer. We know what works. It's teaching about Jesus. Teaching about Jesus is what works. And we're going to pray about the teaching about Jesus. Yes. That they'll speak that word boldly. Amen? That's what works. That's what saved you. That's what saved me. That's what healed you. That's what healed me. That's what delivers us. That's what frees us. That's what brings us peace. That's what brings us joy. That's what brings us out. Amen? Amen? The teaching about Jesus. Glory to God. The same thing that they didn't want taught. Who didn't want it taught? The enemy. The devil hated it. He, he knew he'd lost already. The only thing he could do is try to get you silent. Why does he try to get you mad? Because you'll quit talking good about Jesus. If he can make you mad, you'll start talking about someone else and not Jesus. You ever notice that? Mad people rarely, they, they won't even tell you they're mad at God. They'll tell you who they're mad at, and it's not God. When the truth of the matter is, they're mad at God. It's just the way it is. And they'll, they'll, so they'll talk about other people. <laughs> All right, you guys got quiet on me again. <laughs> when they heard that, they lifted up their voice. They set sail. They weighed the anchor. They took off their voice. They lifted up their voice with one accord, together, unanimous, unanimously, with passion, in harmony. In other words, when they lifted up their voice, they prayed and God heard one voice. Amen? Amen. You know, it's like when they sing in harmony, it's still, it's one voice. It's, it's, it's many voices that make up one saying the very same thing at the very same time with the very same heart together. Amen? They lifted up their voices with one accord together and said, Lord, Thou art God. Well, they, they, started, they started talking about God. They said, you're God. No one else is God. There's none like you. You're God. You made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The king, this is prayer. This is prayer. You know, a lot of people, they just go right into it. But sometimes you need to say, oh, you're God. Tell him who he is. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Be thankful. What are they doing? They're being thankful for who their God is. They're, they're telling him, we, we know who's God. We're not confused. You're God. You're the one that made the heavens. You're the one that made the earth. You're the one that's made everything in them. And, and the kings of the earth have stood up and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. You notice that they tried to do exactly what God tells us. We're to gather together. They're trying to gather against him. Amen? Why? Because the devil, he doesn't have any tricks of his own. He has to use God's tricks. God's word, not trick. God doesn't have tricks. Amen? And so he tries to get him to gather against the Lord and against his Christ. Verse 27. For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, what? Against Jesus. Amen? For to do so whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel, counsel determined before it to be done. And now, Lord, now they're going to ask. They've, ta they've talked about him. They've, ta they've, they've, they've reminded him who they believe he is, who they know he is. And now they're going to ask. They, they first, you know, it's like Jesus. What, what did he say when you pray? He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In other words, he began by talking about God, about the Father. And then he began to ask. And they, then they began to ask. And they, they asked, they said, the Lord, he said, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings. You know, in the world today, in this nation, we don't necessarily get threats, but, but we do get the eye, we do get, we're weird, we do, well, those church people, oh, look at those Christians, there they go again. And there's a lot going on in the world today. God knows everything that's going on. Amen? And he knows everything that's going on against people and, and against ministries and against, you know what, the devil hates ministries. He hates churches. He, he, he would love to find ways to have less churches, less ministries, less people of God that will go out and be happy and, and, and preach the good word in season and out, not just in a church, not from a pulpit, anywhere they are. The devil hates that. 
And, and, and so he tries, to, he tries to make things happen. And, you know, you got people out there today and they don't talk against the church, but they talk about other things that sound like church, but they're nothing like church. They, they, try, to, they try to sound like they're godly, but they have no Jesus. Amen. And, and those, people, those people are enemies of God. They don't want to be, and he still died for them, don't get me wrong. While you, we were yet his enemies, Christ died for us. Those people need Jesus. Our job is not to say, ooh, look at those enemies. No, our job is to say, ooh, another person that can get saved. There's another one to receive Jesus. You know, I found myself when I watch TV and I see people that I've known and watched for years, and I used to just watch them and then turn the TV on, and then now, now I hear what they say, and I'm like, oh, they can't be saved. And you think, that's not good. And you pray for them. People you've only seen on TV, people you've only watched in a football game. I pray for football players right now. You know what? They don't get to go to much church. They're playing football on Sunday. I'm glad they are, but no, I mean, <laughs> I want them to be saved. I don't even care if they play football, if they'll get saved. If they get saved, they can still play football. Stop that. <laughs> he, said, he said, behold their threatenings and grant to thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word. What are they praying? They're praying that not only will they speak the word like they just did, they will speak it bolder than they ever have. In other words, with more, uh, that, that word bold means, means thorough, uh, confident in every way. And I like that, that it means in every way because that put, brings the next, ver the next sentences into play. Because he's saying, I want them to speak the word in every way possible. And then he says, by stretching forth your hand to heal. What's that? That's speaking the word. How'd that happen? By speaking the word boldly. By, 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 that signs and wonders may be done in, by the name. What, what, what were they weren't supposed to speak in? The name. The name. What still needs to be spoken today? In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Aren't you glad that God put us under the pastors that we are under? That, that they boldly proclaim. You know, I've went in to meetings and listened to Brother Moore speak where when I heard him, I thought, man, he's getting all over people right around here. And, and you're like, that's got to be uncomfortable. You know, it's not because God gave it for him to say. And he speaks the word boldly. I, I'm not, I, I am so thankful that God put me in that, under that type of person. Uh, that, that is, because that's the most important thing. What they need to hear is what they need to hear. You, know, you, can, you, can, you can give them cotton candy for their ears all day long, but you know what happens to cotton candy. You, know, you, you ever eat cotton candy? You put it in your mouth and it goes away. I want something you chew on. Amen? And, and so I'm thankful, and that's what we're believing God together for this week. For the word of God to go forth with all boldness, amen, in every way possible with healing and signs and wonders, glory to God, in the name of his holy child, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what we're going to believe together tonight. We're going to pray for that. We're going to pray for a couple other things. We're going to pray for that. But, but, the, but the next verse is where we need to come in. And it said, and when they had prayed, how'd they pray? Together as one, unanimously, harmoniously. Harmoniously. It's a little bit professorish. <laughs> Professor of music, which is probably my next thing. <laughs> I've mastered so many things, why not music now? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. They were assembled. In other words, they were built in this place as one. That they were assembled. In other words, it wasn't just that they were all there. They were in the right place at the right time saying the right thing, doing their part in this prayer, amen, to make the wall shake. Amen. Huh? That's a wall shaking prayer. That, but, you know, and people started looking for the walls to shake. You know what? You want to shake walls? Shake, shake some spiritual walls. Get in people's, get in people's heart. Get in people's Getting people's business. Amen? You don't know what it felt like when those walls shook anyway. All right? Just said the walls shook. We don't know, we don't know what the, how they shook. But the important part, people miss the important part when they see, wow, they shook. 
Well, why did Shechem? Because they were assembled, built, joined together as one, unified. Amen? That's how you pray. That's how the church prays. The church can pray that way because the church has been filled with the absolute same thing. Everything that's in me is in you. Through the Holy Spirit, everything that was in Jesus is in me and everything that's in Jesus is in you. We are filled with the very same thing. We can always say the same words with the same heart, with the same purpose at the same time, believing for the same result. Amen? And, and, and that's, that's not, that can't happen anywhere else. Only in the church. Only in a body of believers is that possible. That, that's why he asks us to pray for our nation. That's why he asks us to pray one for another. Why? You should have the same heart for another that they have for you. Why? You're filled with the same things. Amen? You're filled with the same ability, the same, the same purpose, the, space, the same drive. We're, we're to strive together. Amen? And, and that's, that, those are things that only we can do. And, 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 and tonight as we pray, we're going to strive together in prayer. Amen? Amen. For, for, for the things of the gospel. We're going to believe together for the week of increase, for the, for the word that comes forth, for the service that goes out, for the people that come in, for the ears that hear, for the eyes that see. We're going to pray to God and believe together and receive. Amen? We're going to do these things together because when you do them together, when you pray together, amen, I don't care if the walls shake as long as the word's spoken boldly. You know, you got too many people looking for the walls to shake and they miss the words. Well, if the, if the walls would shake, the word, word, the word would be spoken boldly. No, that's not why the word was spoken boldly. The prayer is why the word was spoken boldly. Amen? Wall shaking obviously were important or he wouldn't have put it in there. But what's important is the prayer opened up the door for God to move in a way that he hadn't to this point. Amen? Because from this point on, things took off. Why? Because a takeoff prayer was made. A sail away, pull the anchors up prayer was made unto the Lord for this. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to pray from our heart, from our, from our soul, from, from our mind as one. We, we want purpose and, and, and plan to come together and, and, and signs and wonders, healings, that the Word of God would go forth in such a way that the goodness of God would be seen throughout the, both buildings online and anybody that will hear it later. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because, you know, all people say, well, if you're not in the building. No, this, this, these words also mean partner. If you're a partner, you can hook. If you're watching online, you can hook up with us just like anything, anybody. Hook up. We're going to pray. Amen. We're going to pray. You know what? There's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of people watching online. Yeah. Set your heart for them. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Healings. We get healing testimonies all the time of people that were watching online. We get good testimonies that didn't even watch online. They heard it on a CD. The Word works. Amen. You know, if He speaks it boldly in person... It's bold on a CD. It's bold on the internet. It's bold. It's bold. It's how it's received that's going to make the difference in a person's life. We're believing for people to receive. We're praying for people tonight that they'll not only come, they'll get. Amen? Don't just come. Dive in. How much fun is it to go to the pool and watch everyone else swim? No, let's just dive in. Let's just dive in. I had to close my phone. Saddest day of the year. Close the pool. <sighs> I'm about over it. It's been, it's, been, it's been two weeks now. I'm getting close. Pray for me. <laughs> and, the, and they prayed, and the place was shaken where they prayed. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with all boldness. They spoke the Word of God with all boldness. Why? It was the prayer. Prayer was made. People say, well, couldn't they have done it before? No, because prayer had, they prayed. They prayed and the prayer was answered. Amen? That, that, that's why God said, pray, ask. He wants us to ask. He wants our participation in these things. And, and part of our participation in week of increase is tonight. Right? When we come together as one and we pray together, the, the way we're created, we were created together, we were 
We were joined together. We were builded together. We strive together. We're seated together. We, are, we, we do so many things together. We, we should pray together and believe together and receive together. Amen? Amen. Amen? And these are, these are the things we're going to do tonight. Amen? We're, we're going to believe God and we're going to have some good stuff. Right. Amen? Romans 15, 20. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive, that word strive, partner with, partner with, people watching online, partner with, struggle in company, in company with, in, together, union as one. Together, together is not just in the same place. Remember we talked about it. It's not just in the same place. Together is with the same heart the same mind, the same purpose, the same goal. That's what we want to be. That's our purpose in praying. We're not just taking a Friday night to pray. We're taking a Friday night to believe God together, to ask for things that we're going to receive. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. One of the things we're going to pray about is uh, the Word going forth, the very thing we're just talking about, boldness. You know, in Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he said, praying always, and what he's doing, he's saying, I want you to pray always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. We're going to pray just like that. We're going to pray with prayers, supplication, and in the Spirit. Amen? And watch thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're going to pray for everybody that's going to watch, everybody that will be here, everybody that will be in Sarasota, we're going to pray that they receive for all the ministers, for all the people who maybe are on the fence, whether they're even going to come or watch. People that maybe thought about closing down their ministry. We're praying. We're believing this will be their time. This will be their day. Amen? Amen. And, and then he says, and, and, and you, well, sometimes we skip over, but what he's really saying in this next verse, in verse 19, he's saying, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit for me. Amen? It's the same prayer. He said, first he said, pray for, pray, use, use all these types of prayers for all the saints. Now he's saying, and for me, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. For me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. Same kind of prayer they were looking at at Acts. That I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel. And you know, we, we want... I mean, when Brother Moore opens up his mouth, if Mrs. Moore talks, we want the Word of God to come out. Amen? We, we want to know that, that everything God put in him will get out just the way God wanted it out. In just the order, in just the, just the, the way, the purpose, the, the, the night, whatever, every way that God wanted it out, we want it that way. Amen? That, that Brother Moore will have it in him and that it will come out just the way God planned. There's a blueprint for every service. There's a blueprint. And we want God's blueprint for these services. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. It says, pray for me that utterance may given to be, be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambas ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly. He says it twice. I want to open my mouth boldly and I want to speak boldly. Which makes good sense. If you open your mouth boldly, might as well speak out of your mouth boldly. Amen? So he's going to do both. He's going to open his mouth, and the Word of God is going to come out. Glory to God. And, and that's, what, that's, that's what he asked the church at, at Ephesus to pray. And, and I know that Brother Moore's heart is to say everything that God would have him say, to bring out everything, and that everything happened, whether healings and, and signs and wonders and, and refreshing, and, and that, that the heart of the Moors is, is in these verses. That they, they're not worried about what people think of them. They want people to hear the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, th and that's the important thing. And, and that's what we're going to pray about. Amen? And then, and then for the service... Um, the service teams, the people, that, that we communicate our faith properly. Amen? That, you know, some people think you've got to talk to communicate. Deeds communicate faith. They communicate love. They communicate that we care about you. They communicate to people. You know what? Many of the things that we do 
for the ministers and the people that will come here, we'll leave, they'll leave with them. And, and, and they'll never be the same again because we used our faith and love to communicate faith and love to them, to refresh them before they left here. It's important that they, they be refreshed before they leave this place. Amen? We're going to pray about that. Glory to God. And then one last thing we're going to pray. In Acts 8, 5, 6, I was looking at this today, and I thought, wow, you can hear together. You can pay attention together. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord, unanimously in harmony, gave heed, paid attention, regarded, and adhered to unto those things which Philip spoke. What was he speaking? Oh, he preached Christ. Amen? And so hearing and seeing miracles, which he did. So we want to believe God together that everyone that, that, that comes will have ears to hear together. And, and, and see, so it gives us something that we need to do. We need to make sure that we're regarding and adhering to it. Because you can't do somebody else's part. You can pray for them to be able to, but our part is to adhere and regard and, and hook, our, hook our ears to what's going on and stay in the service. And, and as we do, it allows others to come in with us. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. You guys ready to pray? Yes, got it, got, you got it now? We're praying together yes, as one, praying in one accord. We're lifting up our voice. It's not going to be how many ever voices are in here. There's a lot of voices in here. But we're going to lift them up and it's going to be one voice unto the Lord praying for the goodness of God and the, and the things that, that need to happen and we can increase the good things that God wants to happen. His desire. How many, if, if you could know God's heart, which you can, would want to make sure that happened? You'd do everything in your power if God said, this is really my heart, son, and, and you knew you could help because he gave you the ability. Wouldn't you do it? Yes. We, well, we can. Amen? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Just start thanking him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You are such a good God. You are wonderful. You are magnificent. You are excellent in all your ways. You are our God. You're a good God. And we're thankful to be a part of the things you're doing here on the earth today. We're thankful unto you for every good thing that you're doing, that you will do. We're thankful to be able to serve in this ministry, in this church, in these churches, Lord. We're thankful for everything you're doing, and we know that we have a part. And that's exciting because we have a part. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now pray this with me. Father God, we pray together in harmony as one concerning the week of increase meetings, knowing your goodness would manifest itself, that your word can go forth boldly. And so tonight we ask for your help in this coming week. Lord, prepare Brother Moore's heart. Fill him up to overflowing with everything you desire to be said, to be heard, to be shown, to be done, that everything that's on your heart would come through him to us and we would hear the Word of God, spoken boldly, unashamedly, to the help, to the, to the answering of questions, bringing people to another level, out of problems, into the light, out of darkness, out of struggles, that the Word would go forth and make free all that would hear. Lord, we pray that, that he would be able to focus fully on the, on the task at hand, hearing from you, him and Mrs. Moore, together, seeing and knowing ahead of time 
your plan, your will, what to do, how to do it. Lord, we know you have a plan and we ask, reveal it fully to their hearts and help it to come out in such a way that all those who would purpose to hear it would be changed forever. That the word spoken boldly would bring forth healing, signs and wonders. That it would bring forth healing to ministries, healing to ministers, refreshing to people all through the congregation, watching online, those that have been weary, it will be a word spoken that it would strengthen them, edify them, build them up, that there would be such a love through which it comes from, that it would build them up, that would encourage them and bring them to a place of refreshing and excitement about your things that would go on in their lives, in their ministries, that they'd be refreshed. And Lord, if there's any that have thought we should be here, but they don't see a way, Lord, we ask, give them what they need, whatever they would require, finances, time, whatever it might be that's holding them back, pull it out of the way, and give them the opportunity. Show them the way to get here and keep it on their heart that they should be here and they should not miss. And help them to have an excitement and a stirring in their heart that this is where they'll find the answers. This is where they'll be refreshed. This is where they'll be loved and they'll find the answers necessary to take them forward in their lives, in their ministries. Lord, help them. And Lord, we pray over the service teams. Lord, every one of us that get to help and serve in any capacity in these meetings. Lord, that you ex help us. Lord, we say, we will stir ourselves up. We stir ourselves up in the name of Jesus to serve like we've never served before with an excitement, with a fervor, and with a love in faith, communicating the goodness of God, refreshing those who need refreshed, loving those who need some love, building each other up, building up the others, helping us work together to accomplish what you desire, what you've put in the heart of the Moors. Help us as, as the body of this church, the ministry, the partners, Sarasota, help us to work together to see together, to hear together, to do together all those things which you've graced us to do and that work together to accomplish in every service your heart, your desire that people would be built up by our service, that people, ministers, would get excited because we're excited. Lord, help us not to let down, but to come up, to pull up anchors and to sail away, to take this on with our, with our whole hearts and to serve you in the manner you've given us. And Lord, we ask for every person that would come into these meetings here in Sarasota, 
online that the thousands of people that would hear this word, give them ears to hear. Take away distractions. Lord, we pray because you love them. We love them. We love one another that we would hear together, that we would see together, that we would take heed, give heed to your word, that we would adhere to what, you, what, what God's shown, what he's showing through the word spoken, through the things done, that Lord, we all together as one would purpose by faith, to take hold. Lord, when we walk in those doors, before we walk in those doors, we'll prepare our hearts to receive from you together. And Lord, we thank you. And we purpose by faith to be together, to fit together, to be joined together, as we're seated together, as we're praying together, as we're believing together, as we're receiving together. Lord, we join and we refuse to have any strife, any divisions. Satan, you have no place. We bind you up. We tell you, you can't be here causing things that would divide. We will, by faith, through grace, join as one in these meetings to accomplish the very heart of God. Salvations, healings, miracles, saved ministries. Lord, we thank you for every part that we get to be in. And Lord, we know that there is so much to pray concerning these things. And we know that the Holy Spirit can help us to pray further concerning all these things. And so we join faith together and we ask that you give us utterance as one in the Holy Spirit to pray further concerning the week of increase in Jesus' name.